The young lionesses are looking for a weak spot. They see it, and this wildebeest immediately knows he's the target. He races towards the herd, but the lions have cut him off. His only hope now is to run. Lions are fast, but only over short distances. To outrun not just one, but three lionesses working as a team has meant a lengthy and speedy run. Lactic acid buildup in his muscles peaks, causing extreme cramps. He's given everything he has to escape. to the overwhelming bounty of wildebeests. Foxtrot 1 and Zulu Echo 5 are spared the lion threat for the moment. Zulu Echo 5 is one of six mares in a harem led by a single stallion. She's five years old, an adult in the zebra world. And as of 20 past six this morning, a new mother Born in the middle of a battlefield, mother and foal will soon be drawn into a brutal million-year-old migration. Every year, the search for food and water drives nearly one and a half million wildebeests, hundreds of thousands of zebras and antelope, on an 1,800-mile round trip across this East African savanna. At the moment, the main wildebeest and zebra herds are in the south, taking advantage of the summer grass. Zulu Echo 5 and her companions didn't trek as far south, finding enough graze for their numbers here, about halfway up the migration route. As the rains push northward, all will follow, across two ferocious rivers, including the infamous Mara, which will run with blood. There is neither start nor finish to this endless cycle. For each animal, the only beginning is birth, and the only ending, death. It is the start of the long dry season. The main army of one and a half million wildebeest is many miles to the south, but the south is drying up. The rains are moving to the north. The zebras can't stay here. The black army is on the move, chasing the rains north to the promise of water and new grazing. As one, they start moving north, just as the black army moves up behind them. Zulu Echo 5 and her foal, Foxtrot 1, join this forward unit. The northern lands are now the place to be. There is water, food, and for the little foal, mother's milk. She will need plenty of green grass to keep it flowing. They must move or die. It's going to be quite a journey. Battles will wage. 
Mercenary predators will attack. Ambushes lie ahead. Foxtrot 1, now 10 days old, does his best to keep up. His mother is never far from his side. Finally, they arrive at the Talek River, a tributary of the Mara. It's a source of much needed water, but their journey cannot end here. The plains to the north are where the abundant mineral rich grazing is. And with an army of one and a half million wildebeests only a few days march behind, the food here isn't going to last long. They need to cross. But first, they must drink. A lazy pod of hippos owns this section of river, but these vegetarians are the least of the zebra's problems. The muddy water at the edge is not good for drinking, and zebras are fussy. They need to reach the deeper flowing stream. But clean water doesn't come cheap. Though he's more interested in his mother's milk, Foxtrot 1 goes with the flow through the muddy shallows. He hasn't yet learned to fear what lurks beneath. The crocodiles here in the Talek are not as large as the monsters of the Mara, but they're large enough to bring down an adult zebra. The zebra's body language is clear. They're anxious as they enter the water. But they take courage from their numbers. They stand their ground and drink. Is it recklessness, a calculated risk, or just plain desperation? Finally, some sense is forced into the zebras by nearly half a ton of primal reptilian hunger. But they don't retreat far, they hold their position on the bank. The instinct to head north is strong. One zebra makes a bold decision to cross. Fear holds the others back. Without her herd, she's made herself a prime target. Many of these crocodiles haven't eaten in months. But zebras are no pushovers. She bolts and shakes the crocodile off, then turns and beats a hasty retreat. Zulu Echo 5 calls out, but ultimately, all the herd can do is watch. To cross this river, they're going to need an army. Wildebeests don't march in one single herd. Groups range in size from hundreds to hundreds of thousands spread across a broad front. And right now, thousands are just minutes away from the zebras waiting to cross the Talek.
Ignoring the bones left behind after last year's crossing, the wildebeest army streams down the bank straight to the river, instinct overwhelming any fear of the crocodiles. Zebras seize the moment and take the plunge with the wildebeests. But Zulu Echo 5 and Foxtrot 1 hang back. The crocodiles who guard this passage are hungry. The front lines will have the heaviest casualties. Although some crocodiles are caught sleeping, they are soon woken by the chaos and they join the attack. The crocodiles move in from all sides. The wildebeests and zebras head for the opposite bank as fast as they can. Zebras are stronger swimmers than wildebeests, sometimes even outpacing the crocodiles. But some pay the ultimate price. Zulu Echo 5 has chosen to be one of the last in the water. With the crocodiles preoccupied, it's time to see whether her strategy works. Foxtrot 1 follows close behind. The young foal has made it. But just because he's out of the water doesn't mean he's out of trouble. Hundreds of years of annual floods have carved steep banks into the sides of the Taleg River. The zebras are trapped. It's a high stress situation. Adults bite and kick to maintain personal space. And with nowhere to go, little Foxtrot One can't back away. He's received a painful lesson. And he's lucky that kick could have broken his leg, or worse. And that would have provided the crocodiles below with a free meal. With his mother back by his side, they search for an exit. But if the adults can't power up over these steep cliffs, Foxtrot 1 doesn't have a chance. The steeper the banks, the greater the chance of falling back into the river. And that's the last place they want to be. Zulu Echo 5 has only got two choices, to lead her foal upstream or downstream. The wrong choice will take them further and further from a way out. get lucky. Zulu Echo 5 and Foxtrot 1 have reached the Northern Plains. They're across the first obstacle. But the Mara River several days ahead will make crossing the Talek look like a walk in the park. Before they can even attempt it, there's still miles of open plain to contend with. The wildebeest stream onto the northern plains, joined by herds of zebras. For days, wave after wave of the great herds cross the Talek, nearly two million animals in all. The rains have given life to these vast plains, a seemingly endless feast of long grass. It's a rare moment on this long migration to rest and to feed, to recover, and even to play. Mm -hmm. 
It seems idyllic. But consuming about 5,000 tons of grass a day, the herds can't stay in one place for too long. The tall grasslands will be transformed into dust bowls within weeks. So they follow the isolated rainstorms on these northern plains, crisscrossing the landscape as they chase each new flush of grass left in the storm's wake. Unwittingly, they maintain their preferred habitat of open grassland by trampling on seedling trees, inting regeneration of woodland. Without these massive grasslands, the herd numbers would plummet. The Black Army fans out over its new territory. But they're not alone. The lions have been waiting for this moment. They're hungry for battle. As tens of thousands of animals finally spread throughout their domain, the big cats get what they've been waiting for. But as an army, the wildebeest form a formidable barrier, and each individual carries its own set of serious weapons. But lions aren't the only hunters on these plains. Along with lions, spotted hyenas are the super predators of the savannah. These curious youngsters, about four months old, won't pose a threat for another year or so. But with the sun about to disappear, the adults of their clan have already headed out for the night. And night time is the time of the hyenas. The attack comes in total darkness. The hyenas target a zebra mega herd made up of several harems. Sunrise reveals the gruesome aftermath. And everyone partakes. Vultures can spot a fresh carcass from miles above the plains. They've got to be quick. Animals are reduced to bare bones in minutes. It's a bloody business surviving on these plains. But it's nothing compared to the absolute terror that lies ahead. The Mara River. The rains the herds have been chasing have swollen this normally placid river into a violent torrent. On the entire 1800 mile Great Migration, this is the worst bottleneck. Zulu Echo 5 and Foxtrot 1 are heading straight for it. And waiting for them are the largest crocodiles in Africa.
For months, these crocodiles have survived on little but scraps. All of that is about to change. The Black Army has been on the Northern Plains for 10 days. They've spread out far and wide, following isolated storms. Now the rain is drawing them north, straight towards the Mara River. Torpedo is the dominant crocodile here on this stretch of the Mara. The scar on his nose evidence of a long and violent past. And it's no coincidence, his territory includes a major crossing point. A crossing point that is about to get some serious traffic. of crossing points along the 250 mile long Mara River. Sections of the steep banks worn down by millions of hooves. And right now, drawn here by the noise and numbers, tens of thousands of wildebeest and zebras from miles around converge. Zulu Echo 5 and her foal are among the first to arrive. And once again, they're not anxious to get their feet wet. With good reason. The deep water gives the massive crocodiles here a clear advantage. And it seems many of them prefer the taste of zebra to wildebeest. Torpedo, the largest of the group, is no exception. A zebra after zebra learns the hard way. He's not attacking to satisfy his hunger. He's storing food. stashes the dead bodies in the murky depths of the riverbanks, saving them for later, and immediately returns for more. It's bad news for the zebras and wildebeests. This is not going to stop when the crocodile's stomachs are full. Zulu Echo 5 and her herd head downstream in search of an opening. But Torpedo has no problems following them down. Another wave of the Black Army sweeps into the river. Zulu Echo 5 and Foxtrot 1 make a break for it. The current is stronger than it looks, and the zebras are swept downstream. As Zulu Echo 5 fights the rapids, there's no way little Foxtrot 1 can keep up. The pair are separated, and the foal disappears into the chaos. More zebras run the gauntlet. On the far side of the river, Foxtrot 1 is fighting a losing battle with the current. More zebras are washed downstream, and the foal follows them back across the river towards the side he started on, looking for his mother. Torpedo is still on the hunt, but he's heading towards Zulu Echo 5, who's struggling to get out over the rocks on the far bank. Desperately searching for his mother, Foxtrot 1 turns midstream again, crossing the river for a third time.
Amazingly, Foxtrot One makes it to the far side again. He's been lucky so far. He must get out of this river. the size of the adults, he has half the reach, less than half the strength, and he's already exhausted from his swim. His mother, Zulu Echo 5, is fighting her own battle. Even for her, the current is too strong. And now, she's got even bigger problems. Crocodiles. Just 200 yards downriver, Foxtrot 1 is only a loop away from safety. But for his little legs, the planes are just out of reach. Surrounded by crocodiles, his mother rests. She prepares herself for a final push. It's do or die. Foxtrot 1 is not giving up, even though his muscles must be aching. One small barrier remains to the plains beyond. With fresh legs, he'd be up in a flash. But he's exhausted. Zulu Echo 5 doesn't join the herd on the plains. She's looking for Foxtrot 1. Although they're only about a hundred yards away from each other, they're still worlds apart. A nudge from behind would get Foxtrot 1 up this embankment. Zebras recognize their mothers by the sound of their calls. But from where Foxtrot 1 is standing, there's only the roar of the river. Zulu Echo 5 makes a dramatic decision. Going against the traffic, she plunges back into the crocodile-infested Mara River. Perhaps she thinks Foxtrot 1 is on the other side. The crocodiles notice the new target. Torpedo is amongst them. They're just too far downstream, and the mother zebra makes it to the shallows. Another orphan looking for its mother, in desperation, heads back into the river. Zulu Echo 5 heads back onto the southern plains to look for her son. But Foxtrot 1, exhausted and bewildered, is stuck on the opposite bank. Without his mother's milk, he won't last long. He's got a day or two at most to find her.
One and a half miles to the north of the aerial search, just on the other side of the Mara River. It's been 32 hours since Foxtrot 1 has seen his mother. Foxtrot 1 is stranded on the north side of the river. Zulu Echo 5 is still missing on the plains to the south. Foxtrot 1 is jolted awake. The rumble of 400,000 hooves on the southern side of the Mara River mixes with zebra calls. The largest part of the migration is approaching, and the foal follows the noise, listening in vain for his mother's call. Every year, one Mara River crossing stands out above all others. Here, the river will run with blood. Today is the day, and all of Africa's main players have come to bear witness. Even the hippos. They've kept a low profile during these crossings, but not today. They challenge the crocodiles to the feast. There's no consensus on why these two-ton herbivores occasionally eat meat. Perhaps they're after the salt content of the blood and flesh. Whatever the reason, there's plenty more where that came from. The Black Army, hundreds of thousands strong, now streams from the plains towards this crossing. Thousands of zebras join them. One of them is Zulu Echo 5. And somewhere on the other side of the river is her foal, Foxtrot 1. Both have been drawn here by the cacophony of calls. This is going to be the biggest, most brutal crossing this year. and the other crocs get to work. The volume of animals pouring into the river is too much. Disaster is inevitable. They can't get out the other side fast enough. It's a deadly bottleneck. In the scramble up the steep banks, 
some fall and are trampled underfoot. More bodies pile up as animals lose their footing, not on the steep banks this time, but on the pile of dead and dying bodies. The pile up is relentless, and caught in the middle is Zulu Echo 5. Scavengers waste no time taking advantage of the bloodbath at the Mara River. But here, even feasting on the dead can exact a high price. One false step can be fatal. Amidst the dead bodies, a striped figure is moving, struggling to get to its feet. Zulu Echo 5 has made it across the river, but she's in serious trouble. For the first time in two days, Foxtrot 1 finally catches sight of his mother, struggling on the bank below. If she dies, his death would quickly follow. Zulu Echo 5 has been trapped on the carcass pile for hours now. But something inside her refuses to give up. and exhausted. Her only hope for survival is if Torpedo and the other crocodiles have finally had their fill. And it seems, this time, they have. The Mara runs with blood. But one zebra is not quite ready to leave yet. Zulu Echo 5 calls, knowing her foal will respond if he's nearby.
father and son are reunited, but won't have long to rest. When the rains return to the south, the great herds will once again be forced to follow and replenish their numbers. The migration will come full circle. For the mother zebra and her son, Zulu Echo 5 and Foxtrot 1, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm.